Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to a different type of rebuild. Respect, 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 man. Today, we are not rebuilding a player or something like that. We are not rebuilding a club. We are rebuilding the career of Jose Mourinho. Um... This man has been struggling lately, but you all remember the incredible heights he had achieved with the likes of Chelsea in the past. So I have created a manager career mode and I have gone ahead and put Jose Mourinho in there so I can play as him. And now, guys, we're going to be rebuilding his career mode or his career. Let's put it that way. We're going to start off in a small Portuguese team. Sadly, the team that he originally started off with, the Vitoria Setubal squad, is not in FIFA anymore. So we are diving into one of the weaker, weaker sides in the Portuguese league, taking over as manager and, of course, working our way from the smaller teams in the world to the top, top teams in the world and going ahead and hopefully winning Champions League titles, doing the things that Jose, Jose Mourinho used to be able to do with the likes of Porto, Inter, incredible achievements, and of course, also with Real Madrid. Now, we are going to be rebuilding his career, and that means anything is possible. We are going to go ahead and see what we can achieve with him and with his tactics that we're going to be setting up in a second. I think every single team we're going to try and set up in a Jose Mourinho type of way. Uh, and the way that I'm going to basically go for is going to be the Real Madrid type of play that he has been playing back in the day. The counter-attacking football that was devastating for clubs. A strong defense, a strong core at the defense, and then moving forward from that position with absolutely insane players moving forward that were capable of pulling off some wonders like the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema, of course, that he had at the time as well. So we're going to dive in. Jose Mourinho, I am here to take over and help you, my friend. I know you're struggling at AS Roma right now. Things are not necessarily going exactly like he wants it to. Absolutely correct. And he has been struggling at Spurs, got fired. Things have been tough on this man. Let's rebuild him. So go ahead and hit that like button if you guys want to see more manager rebuilds. This time, we're going to start it off with Jose Mourinho. And in the future, we could go ahead and do other players. Some like David Beckham. We could do a rebuild with him. We could take over David Beckham and go ahead and start a rebuild in the MLS and see what kind of coach David Beckham could be all those things. Let's start it off today with the rebuild right here. Multiple seasons of Jose Mourinho goodness coming up right now. The squad that we are going for is Morarense. It is not the strongest, but also not the weakest squad in Portugal. It definitely isn't a squad to win the league with, but let's take a look into the team itself and see what we have to work with here. Obviously, we can't get too attached to the club itself, but throughout the career of Jose, if we find certain players doing well, we could take them to the next team. Of course, the thing with Jose is going to be, we're going to be moving to different squads and seeing what we can achieve over there. But I think it's only fair um, for us to only move teams if we actually had a good season. So um, we'll see how it goes. I guess for this team, a good season would be considered to be in a top half finish. If we can somehow pull that off, that would be a great thing to do. But of course, Liga Portugal right here, you can see we have about 18 teams in here. I'd say if we can finish in a top eight, that is a successful season for us. And we have helped build this team in uh, for the future. So the goal is going to be to get them into the top eight this season. Every time we move teams, we'll be setting ourselves new goals to chase down to be able to, al to be allowed to move to a new team. If we can't achieve those goals that we set for ourselves at the beginning of the year, we won't be able to move and we have to do another season with the club that we're at. We are not leaving before we finish our project. So, Jose, there he is. You can see him right here, guys. He is ready for the new job. Jose Mourinho is stepping up right now. Let's see how this one goes. Interesting enough, they have the Sporting Lisbon uh, colors here as well with the green and white. Uh, and he did actually coach Sporting at some point in his career before he moved to Porto. At least that's what I'm seeing from my information on Google. Oh, hold on. Youth Academy. What do we have going? What do we have? What do we have? Anything? Anything big? This guy must be must be nuts. Uh, I guess we have Kovac here, who is 53 rated. Oh, yeah, this guy's a cam. Yep, this guy's a cam. He's going to be higher rated. So this could be one of the bigger players that we can carry on throughout the career here. Anto Kovac, 67 to 93 potential there. That's not too bad. 
And then we have this man right here who actually has really high potential, but uh, yeah, don't think we're going to be able to turn him into a beast in time. But I'll go ahead and change him to a center back. We'll probably be high rated at that spot. We're going to we're going to pay more attention to this guy, Anto Kovac. I have just gone through this team on so FIFA, guys, and I can tell you right now, there's not a single player that has potential over 77 in this squad. That puts us into a horrible position, really. We have to make the best of this. And to be able to make the best of what we have right here, we have to figure out what starting lineup we want to go with and then move on and actually sell some players now. Since we are going to be here, hopefully, for a short, a short amount of time, it's all about the rating. It's not about being talented and all that stuff. It's about the rating most of the time because simulations obviously depend a lot on the rating of the players. So someone like Vitoria, for example, will be taken out. I don't care what the ratings of these players are right now. It, uh, what their talent is, what their potential is. It's all about the best players playing on the pitch. So we're going to have to make that possible immediately. Let's rework the team and see what we have going. So the bench itself is going to consist of Andre Luis, Jan, Jambor, Mane, uh, Rosic, Silva and Concesao. Then the starting lineup basically is unchanged apart from the centre-back positions. We have Santos and Arthur George coming in or Jorge or whatever his name is right there. We're going to have the team play like this. It's clearly not good enough. So anyone that is on the reserves and on the bench is going to be up for sale immediately so we can actually make some cash and uh, yeah, hopefully bring in some players that can help us out. Uh, maybe potentially some older players are going to be on a cheap for us to bring in to possibly into the CDM position right there, into the left back position right there, even though Conte is kind of 23 years old. So not kind of, he is 23 years old. So we could maybe use him for a little bit, at least for this season, seeing how it grows. And uh, yeah, it's just about making the right decisions because our budget is extremely limited right now as we go into the season. We only have 3.3 million. That is nothing. Oh, by the way, the most important thing, as I mentioned before, we're going to go with a Jose Mourinho type uh, play style. We're going to go and play not. I mean, do we call it drop back? Um... Do we call it drop back? I don't I don't think you can call it drop back. But then again, it kind of was at times. He was really good with that stuff, with, especially at Real Madrid. Them having that incredible defense and then moving forward with the players that they had at the time. So do we go drop back fast build up? I guess that's the closest we can get in terms of uh, FIFA tactics. I'm thinking like pressure and heavy touch could be good as well. But drop back with, uh, I guess the width wasn't too narrow. Uh, but the depth we're going to bring down to like 30, let's say. And fast build up for sure. And it has to be forward runs. The attackers have to get forward immediately. And uh, we have to pressurize our opponents immediately while we are on the ball. Uh, players in the box would have a couple there. And uh, yeah, I guess it's the most Jose Mourinho I can come up with for now. But uh, yeah, that could change in the upcoming upcoming seasons as well. Maybe we go with the Porto style that he had. Or we'll go with a different style that he had, for example, at Inter. But for now, these are the tactics that we're going to be using. The first transfers have gone through, and these are sales. We have Amador leaving, Lacerda going, Oliveira going, Vitoria has left as well. So those were the players that were um, mostly in our reserves. So you can see the reserve side has gotten a little bit smaller for sure. But we have kept the players on the bench and the ones in the starting lineup to not necessarily lose too much of the original players and still have a strong squad in terms of depth as well. I could obviously sell the players on a bench and then just focus on a starting lineup, but that's not what I want to do at this point in time. Now that leaves us with around 7.26 mil, which is obviously a great amount of budget, or let's say 7.8. I want to go for a CDM. Kamara might be young and all that stuff, but I need someone that can help us out immediately. Someone that can I guess, um, yeah, just get the job done. And we are looking after a player that has some of the most balanced stats on him. He has 2,000 total stats on him. Lorenzo Faravelli is going to be playing not necessarily as a CDM, but more of a, of a center midfielder in our team. And that is the player that I want to sign in this first season. The first signing of uh, Mourinho. He has the flair trait. That's interesting. 28, 28 year old. I just bit right into my cheek. Let's see if we can sign him. Four million. That is so much money, but that is the deal. Faravelli is going to be joining us for four mil. Even though he's one of the older folk, we have to pay a little bit much here for him. But it is what it is, guys. Jose needs this man and his team, and we're going to make it happen. His value is set at 3.3 mil, so we have paid 700k more than what he's actually worth. But again, 
it's not necessarily something I want to focus on because at the same time, while we bring him in, uh, we get to now decide if we want to put Kamara or uh, Mani onto the transfer list. I think this allows me to put Mani onto it because Kamara now is a backup. So that way we can uh, change it a little bit up and bring someone uh, bring someone out of our squad and bring some more money in. So Kamara is going to stay and Amane is going to be sold. That is the decision. Uh, Faravelli, as I mentioned, is going to be left centre midfielder now. Look at those total stats. Great pace, shooting, passing, dribbling, defending and physicality. We have brought in a very good centre midfielder here who can definitely have a huge impact on this team specifically. Now, after having signed him, I look at the rest of the team and I realize, sure, Conte will probably go up. So I'm not necessarily going to be changing him up, even though he's the lowest rated player in our team. I might want to focus on the striker. The striker is going to be very important for us. He's 72 rated, sure, but I feel like we could do a little bit better than that and uh, hopefully find someone that can get at least 20 goal contributions this season. I didn't play right. We don't, we don't right. I can't believe I'm making this move, but I'm going for Ashley Barnes, a no-nonsense striker from Burnley, someone that will get things done for us and someone whose contract is expiring. So hopefully we can get this man from Burnley, a quality finisher. He's not necessarily highest rated. Of course he isn't, but he is higher rated than a striker that we have at the moment. And since his contract is expiring, we can hopefully get him on a cheap here. So we're going to go in with a 2.8 million offer for the Burnley striker. They want 3.6. That is still within our budget. Let's go for 3.2. Is that an option? 3.3. Jose is going to get the man that he wants. Ashley Barnes coming in from Burnley. Who would have thought that I would ever buy him in any career mode? I definitely wouldn't have. But he's the one I want. 31 year old. He can still do a job, I hope. He comes in at a value of 3.6 million and takes over for Martins. Here he goes. Martins, you will be sold, buddy. I need that extra money. Mane and Martins are going to be sold. He was 32 years old, 72 rated. This man is 31 years old, 74 rated. Hopefully, at least until the end of the season, he can carry on that 74. Ashley Barnes with zero pace, but good shooting, good physicality. He can pull it off. Good composure as well. He's finishing with the 74. Shot power with the 80. I really, really hope he can be scoring a bunch of goals for us. Heading accuracy is quite decent as well. So kind of hoping he can be the main focus in our team. Burnley striker up top. Here it goes. Well, we have just signed a 2.5 million deal, including our own goalkeeper. Yes, I have put him into the deal, guys. I need an upgrade on a goalkeeping position. It is such an important position and we have gone and signed ourselves an Austrian player, Heinz Lindner, 31-year-old goalkeeper. He has a solid player and cautious with crosses on him. Uh, pretty interesting trait right there. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know you could have solid player on a goalkeeper, but nonetheless, we want this man in our team to improve the squad, especially for the simulations. A higher rated goalkeeper is crucial as I have mentioned before. Also, can you guys let me know in the comments down below how you feel about... Um, oh, 8.2 million release calls. I'm fine with that. How do you feel about Jose Mourinho, man? Uh, a lot of people hate him. I personally didn't like Jose personally at, at certain points throughout, the, throughout his career, I guess I could say. Um, but towards the later part of his career, I kind of started liking him. The same with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. There's something about these arrogant people that have become a little bit softer, more likable, I guess, in the in the past few years. And uh, I felt bad for Jose when he had to leave um, all these jobs lately. I kind of like him. He's such a good character to have in the league. So let me know in the comments down below. How do you feel about Jose? And uh, what do you think he can achieve in the future? Can he come back to actually win things? I mean, I'm trying it right here, but I'm going to know it from you guys. There you go. Heinz Lindner, 75 rating, a plus three upgrade. Well, there's one thing I didn't know about is the fact that Morenense is actually taking part in the Conference League. So that means they must have finished in the top six. If we don't get top six this season, well, that's it for me. I stay around here and I go ahead and try my best once again because... If this team can get European football, as they have done here, which I didn't know about, our uh, our goals should be higher than what we have set it at first, which was top eight. Now, let's say top six is the place to be. Now, currently, we are sitting in the seventh position. Our manager rating is not necessarily great, but only a win could take us into the top four. And that 
is huge. So hopefully our team can carry on and uh, get it done at the end of the season because then we would be allowed to move on. Halfway through the year, Porto is leading the league. No surprises there, but take a look at the squad right now. Uh, we have some growth in Walterson here. Barnes has held his rating as a plus five on him, which is great to see. Farabelli has gone up by plus one. Linda has held his rating. Santos and George are looking good at the centre-back spots. And Conte, as expected, has gone up in his rating. This could be someone that we carry on into the new squad if the squad that we go to needs a 72-rated or possibly 74-rated left-back by the end of the season. Paulinho has only gone up uh, to a 71. But we have Jan right here, who is a young player, 23 years old, who has gone up to a 71 rating. Now, that at the same time kind of motivates me to go ahead and sell Walterson, who's 27, cash in on him in January and put Jan into the starting lineup. That could be something that we do. Also, Kamara now on the 70 rating. I think he was a 68. Rosic has gone up to a 72 as well. Possibly challenging Arthur George there. Silva gone up to a 70, which is good to see. Poincesal here is alone from Porto, so don't even bother about him. Martins has dropped in his rating massively. We have not been able to sell him yet, so we have lost a lot of money on him. But thank God Barnes has come in and has done well for us. He's now a five-star skiller through development plans. And uh, let's take a look at who has been scoring the goals for Jose. We have Pires doing well. 10 goals and 3 assists there. Very well done. Walterson, 9-0. Okay, he's having a good season. Suarez with the 3-3. Three three. Barnes with the 6-1. Not necessarily what I expected from him. Hopefully, we can see a lot more coming in the second half of the season. Also, Santos, our best centre-back, is actually a low knee. So, he's going to be leaving us at the end of the season. So, we better get top 6 this season. Otherwise, well, we have not achieved our goal with this squad. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Pacheco with six assists. He's the top leading assistant in our team, but he is 33. So he has gone down in rating, which is obviously not ideal. I didn't realize he was that old. Otherwise, I would have replaced him immediately. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. And then of course, now with Jan growing so much, um, it might be time to let go of Walterson. Even though he has done really well, we could cash in on Walterson and uh, possibly spend it somewhere else if the money is enough and if we get another offer for the other striker that we have on the bench but let's see how january goes by the way guys i have gone ahead and changed both of the youth academy players now he's 52 rated and he is 60 rated not necessarily what i was kind of hoping for but i guess we'll take anto kovac he looks like an exciting prospect uh mun will probably never play for any of our teams but kovac gets a chance well it couldn't have gone better walterson release clause has been met he is at 4.1 mil his actual value is around 2 million so that's huge martins has been sold the backup striker he's gone and then we have some other offers coming in for other players in our team which i would like to accept 1.9 million for a backup player I think I'm going to accept that. I think we have two fullbacks on the bench, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll take that on. Gallego, we can let go of, of, of as well. For 810k, we have missed some bigger offers in the past. And then we have Kevin, the goalkeeper, who actually has to remain. I need him as a backup for now. But that could amount to a good budget for January. Now, we have amassed around 10 million. Yes, 10 million to spend on the team. And right now, there's one spot that is the lowest rated spot in our squad. And that is the right back position. And by going ahead and signing Gilberto, we're going to take away a little bit from the squad depth of Benfica, who have beaten us multiple times and we can't get him well that's a shame i was kind of hoping we could get him as an improvement but i guess it's not meant to be then there is another option for us we can go for ryan fredericks a uh right back that actually had a little bit of hype going for him but now his career has kind of gone downwards uh ryan fredericks from west ham let's see if we can sign him up he would cost us possibly around five million maybe a little bit more than that I'm going to make an offer of 5 million to begin with. You can have a sell-on clause if you want to. West Ham, are you willing to sell him? They want 6 million. Okay, so that will leave us with a little bit of budget to spend on anything else that we want to. 5.5, they're not interested in. Okay, maybe 5.7. I feel like this, could, this one should be going through. There we go. That deal is done. Ryan Fredericks comes in as a 75 rated player, if I'm not mistaken. Yes! Great deal right at the end of the transfer window. With the remaining money, we have put in Pacheco into a deal, guys. He has been sold or will be sold. Andres Felipe Roa is going to come in as a center attacker midfielder. We're going to be switching up to a formation in a 4-3-3 with two center midfielders and a center attacking midfielder. 
uh, dragging the center midfielder that we have currently a little bit deeper into the team to play alongside the left center mid Faravelli. So that is the plan moving forward. Jose is making his moves to put us into the top six. And with these moves on a transfer list or on the transfer market, I should say, it's not looking too bad right now for Morenza to achieve some greatness. But we have absolutely no money left. And that is obviously not ideal. I need to deal with contracts in the second half of the season. Andres Felipe Roa is coming in at a value of 4.6 mil. And that is going to improve our team, as I said before, because Pacheco was going to go down in his stats even more. So we're going to change him into a right sentiment, him to a left sentiment, and then Jumbo is going to come off. And of course, Roa takes over immediately. And with that now, we are set up for the rest of the season with no nonsense, no players in the reserves left, used up all the money. And uh, yeah, I hope this goes well, because if it doesn't, guys, this is going to be a bad, bad season. But... The bad thing on top of it is a lot of these players are old and I can see them going down in the next season. So we need to get something done this year with the signing of Fredericks and also Roa now in this transfer window. I'm hoping for the best. Season end. Please, please make this a good one. Only two draws right there. A couple of wins, a couple of L's. Is that enough for top six? I don't think so, man. I don't. Nah, I don't think so. Is it enough? Oh, it is. <laughs> yes. Top six has been achieved. Okay. So after setting out top eight to begin with, um, now readjusting our target was top six and we have pulled it off. So I guess we can't be too unhappy with that considering that there are 18 teams in here and this team is nowhere like the most, um, the best team out there in Portugal, that's for sure. But being able to carry them into the sixth spot is a huge achievement right here. I'm very happy with that one. Jose has done a great job. Barnes is slowly going down in his stats. Roa has come in and gone up. Uh, who else? I mean, we don't really see much change apart from Conte here, who started off at a 68, now 75 rated. Jan was 68, now 73 rated. So certain players owe Jose a lot here. They have improved thanks to him. But that is going to be us done at Morenense. The question is, what is going to be the next team that's going to make an offer for him? I am very excited to see where we're going to go after this one. Um, this, the offer could come in this season. It could come in next season. I'll give you guys an update when the time comes. But right now you can see right here in terms of top scorers, we have Perez with the 10 goals right there in that list in terms of assists. Do we have anyone in the top 15? It doesn't look like it. So we didn't really necessarily have the outstanding top performers. Pires and Barnes have done well. Jan has done well after coming in into the starting lineup. So congratulations to him. But overall speaking, it's not looking too good right here. And I don't think Conte is going to keep on going up plus six this season. But I highly doubt he's going to go up even more next season. I think this guy is probably going to stagnate around that rating. Uh, in terms of players that I would like to carry with me right now, I don't really have anyone that I'm thinking about. I think we're better off not necessarily looking back to Morenense. Any job offers immediately? Let's see. Any at the end of the season? Benfica, Porto, Sporting, Celtic, Rangers... Stevie G is gone. Rangers, I'm coming. Please, ex please accept me, Rangers. I really want you. Please, Rangers. Come on. Do we have, do we have something? Do we have a deal? Rangers, I want to come over to Scotland. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. Yes. Schulze is going over to Scotland. Stevie G is gone. They need someone new to take the helm and move it on and beat Celtic in the league. Let's freaking do this. The perfect offer. Oh, this is amazing. Get in. Jose to Scotland. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. He's coming out. Jose, pick up the shirt. Pick up the shirt, pal. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Number one, Jose Mourinho. <laughs> All right, Rangers. Jose is here. No worries. I am here to help you. What talents do we have in the Youth Academy? Nothing. Yes. All righty. 9.6 million in the budget only. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that wage budget? Fix that immediately. Oh, hold up a second. This season is not over yet, right? We came in right at the end of the season, which means we can actually go ahead. Oh, we can win the cup. We're in the cup final. Celtic didn't make it. Rangers um, uh, is going to be up against Hibernian. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. We came in second behind Celtic. The goal is going to be winning the title next season, guys. Yes, we have to. Or do we do top two? 
Hmm. What goal do we give ourselves for the next season? I guess, uh, let's say top two, but in the bottom of my heart, I really want to win the league with Rangers, just as Stevie G has done. So here we go. The team itself is consisting of a very talented Haji coming in on that left center forward position. Kent on the right center forward. We are playing a 4-3-2-1 formation with Sakala up front. The 25-year-old is taking over there. Kamara in the midfield alongside Lundstram, who's 28. Jack, who's 30. Goldson is going to be our center back. Balogun playing next to him. Barisic on the left back position. Tavernier, a very, very talented right back here, is going to be playing there. And then we have McGregor in the goal, who's 40 years old. So... Yeah, that needs some freshening up. On the bench, it's not necessarily looking too bad. We have an option for the, uh, for the attackers. We have an option for the two options, actually three for the midfield, which is good. Uh, but it, this team is lacking a couple of players for sure. And then I got to make sure we make the transfers immediately before we go into the next season and get another budget. So I want to use this budget right here to make changes already for the players coming in on the first day of the next season. So... Let's see who they was going to be for Jose. I have just gone ahead and possibly had one of the most insane transfer offers uh, and deals that I've done in a long time because we are about to bring in not only Gavi, one of the biggest talents from Barcelona. We are also bringing in possibly one of the biggest talents in world football, Yusufa Mukoko, and also a new goalkeeper to replace the 40-year-old. He's actually twice his age. Martin van der Voort, 7 million, 5 million, 5 million. Deal's done. Here we come. Rangers into the next season with these talents. It's going to be insane. We could actually carry some of these talents into other teams as well. I am definitely up for it. What's the budget? What is the budget, Chief? Well, let's go ahead and move forward one day to welcome the new lads into the team. I am very excited to bring these types of players into the squad, man. This Rangers squad in 2022-2023 is going to be insane. So what are their ratings? Let's see it. Oh, certain players' contracts have run out by the looks of things, which is a good thing that we have signed Gavi here. So that's a big one for us. Um, we have lost out on one of the center midfielders. Van de Ford coming in at a 74 rating, which is perfect. Mokoko coming in with the 71. For now, he's behind Sakala, but... I am probably going to be selling Sakala because I do want Mukoko to be our main man. And the team has 11 million to spend in this transfer window, which is still a very, very good amount to go ahead and, yeah, achieve something in the transfer market. So let's go ahead and put uh, the main man Sakala onto the transfer market. I appreciate you being here, buddy, but Mukoko is the future. So once we sell him... We should be up towards 20 million. Well, the transfer window has opened for this season and your boy has gone ahead and done something. We have sold Sakala for 11 million and we have signed Rossi for 19.5. And the reason for that is, is because Roof is not necessarily growing anymore. It's not looking good. So we are going to replace him. He is going to be sold. A 29-year-old is going to leave the team. Rossi takes over with the pace and the shot, the four-star, four-star. Coming in into our squad with high, low work rate, only 24 years old. If he has a good season, could be a candidate to take with us into the new teams as well. But I have confidence in this team right now. I have very high hopes. Maybe if I have enough money after selling Roof, I might sign another center midfielder. Well, look at that. Camposano's agent shaking hands with Jose. And we are signing another one, guys. Camposano is going to be the big player that we sign now. 76 rated. We signed him for 10 million. He's worth 10 million. And that is the final upgrade to our team. Not necessarily gone for a talent this time. This time, I wanted someone proven here to come in from Boca Juniors. He's coming in now into this squad. He's going to be playing a little bit deeper. I'm going to put him into the CDM position so that Gavi can move forward and do his things. Kamara is going to be in that center midfield spot doing defending and offense. And of course, Mukoko now up top. I need to get rid of Itin so Mukoko actually plays starting lineup football. Otherwise, Itin will take some time away from him. But after that sale... We go into the season. Let's see what we can achieve. Well, guys, the transfer window is not done yet. Eton has been sold for 5.3 million, and uh, that left us with a decent chunk of money. And that money had to be spent. And we are spending it on Yannick Vestergaard, the giant of a man that I want to bring in into our squad now. He's coming in from Leicester. 44k in wages. He could be captain material for this squad. Mourinho needs him in his squad. Voice crack. Holy hell. Um, we want to put him in there. 
And with Connor Goldson now, we have two center backs with a 77 rating. Again, we have improved our squad. That is what I like to see. And of course, uh, Lundstram is going to go onto the bench here. We have plenty of attackers on the bench right now. So let's bring in some balance. And uh, there we go. Vestergaard coming in. 30 years old. Yes, sure. But he'll be all right. I think he'll do a great job for us. Goldson is right footed. He's right footed, but has a better weak foot. So we'll keep Vestergaard at the left center back position. This is the squad, guys. Let's see what they can pull off. I'm assuming you want an update in January. Let me give you the update you're looking for. We are currently on 47 points. Six points behind Rangers. It's not looking good, guys, in terms of being able to win the league. But we are definitely in that top two as things stand. So technically speaking, there is a chance of us moving on. But I would love to win the league title. That's really what I want to achieve. And now with these players going up in their stats, Gavi up to a 74, Mukoko with a plus three. Rossi with the plus two there. Haji has gone up nicely. Uh, even Kamara is improving. Vestergaard has gone up somehow uh, as a 30-year-old, which is lovely to see. I'm not against it. Van de Ford up to a 76. Generally speaking, lots of good things that I'm seeing here for the squad itself. Who is performing? Who is scoring the goals? And who is not performing? Mukoko doing a great job at striker. Haji, 10 in 6. Incredible season so far. 9 in 5 for Rossi, which is great to see as well. And of course, Tavernier has to play a role in the squad. He is solid. And then Kamara with 8 assists. Well done. Did not expect that at all. Man, this team is performing. But are they still in the Champions League? They were in the Champions League before. Uh, they have been trying to qualify uh, for the Champions League football. I can show you right here. We had beaten Besiktas, but we lost against Ajax. And then in the Europa League, it's not looking good. I, I just, all I see is L's. So we're probably out of the Europa League as well. So let's not hope for anything massive there. We have to focus on the league, which might be a good thing that we have all the time to focus on the league. Celtic coming up instantly. We need that win. Hopefully the team can pull it off. So second half of the season, let's get it on and let's win that title. I beg you, get it done. And then Mourinho can look at it as a finished project already. Up, 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 up. Here we go. Pushing towards the end of the season. 3-2 win. 1-1 one, one draw against Celtic. 2-0 win in the cup against Celtic. 3-2 win in the league. 85 points. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Same amount of points as Celtic. But we have pulled it off. Rangers have once again won the league title get in man hey we did it we freaking did it guys at the first stage we were not there celtic had won the first stage but second stage the comeback is in and we have won the championship over here oh mate that is incredible let's see the performers here we have haji going up to an 81 rossi has remained at the 79 williamson why williamson where's kamara wait did the game just... Oh, the game must have sold Kamara halfway through the season. We could have done even better. We have won the league with a centre midfielder who is 70, uh, 70, 65 rated. Campuzano, amazing. Gavi, 76. Mukoko, 76. These, are, these guys are going to be very expensive if we want to sign them in the next teams. By the way, what's up with my voice cracks? Um, Let's see who's going to be the most expensive one. Haji, 37.5 million, plus six this season alone. That is ridiculous. Van der Ford, plus five, 30 million. Campuzana, 21.5. Same for Rossi. Mukoko and Gavi. We can buy both of these guys for around 40 million. The next team we go to has to have a, a lot of money for us to be able to sign these players. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to necessarily go ahead and sign them immediately. I kind of like the idea of Mukoko and Gavi tearing it up in the Scottish uh, Scottish uh, top division. That'd be kind of interesting to see if we can see them in like the Champions League uh, at some point and play against them with a different squad. But Jose has done his job at this squad. Now, what kind of offers are we seeing? 66 manager rating where we have won trophies. Huh. Club Bruges. 31 million in the budget. Hey, you know what? Jose, you want to go over to Club Rouge? Nah. Nah. I feel I feel like it's a set it's a step to the side. I, I don't want a step to the side. I want a step upwards. So let's go ahead and find another offer here. Can we get another one in here? Who is it gonna be this time? Inter. 
Milan, Napoli, Torino, Bologna, Hellas Verona, Sampdoria, Cagliari, basically the entire Italian league wants us. Now, do I go to Roma and just do it better than Mourinho has done it? I don't know. Or do I go the opposite and I decide to go against Roma and go and join Lazio? Which would be fun as well. Lazio has some really good players. I mean, we see the starting lineup, uh, starting lineups right here. I think Inter, Juventus, and, and those types of teams are too big. Uh, we should be taking over those types of squads. So I am going to be looking at the the ones a level below. I guess like the Fiorentina of the world. Um, Fiorentina would be dope. They have Chiesa back into their squad. There are some really good op good options here, but I do see. A bunch of old players in the Fiorentina squad. Sassuolo, I'm not interested in. Roma, nah, Roma is just boring. He's doing it in real life. I'm going Lazio, bro. I'm going Lazio. Seventh in the league. Next season, our goal is going to be to go ahead and get them Champions League football. Top four for Lazio next year is the goal. Moving from Rangers to Lazio. Let's make it happen. Come on, then. Let, let's see the job accept it. Or me, my inquiry accepted, I guess you could say. Lazio managed your position. Yes! We started off at Morenze, Then we moved over to Rangers. And now, Jose is going over to Lazio Roma. Top four is the goal that we are setting ourselves. No AS Roma, Lazio Roma. Look at him. He's coming out. This is going to be looking awkward, isn't it? Him in that Lazio kit. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Well... Sorry. Well, my friends, here is the Lazio team. Oh boy, look at that. We have Giro Immobile up top. Yes, he's 33 years old, but he's 85 rated, so I don't care. He's going to play. Correa is going to be playing left wing in this team. Felipe Anderson on the right hand side. He's also 30, so a bunch of old players in the squad. But then we have Milinkovic Savic, who has a very unfortunate picture there. He used to have a better picture than that. Sangare from PSV Eindhoven is now in that CDM position at the squad. We have just joined in and he was on the reserves, which probably means he had just signed uh, for the new season. Basic is going to be playing center midfield for now. I am looking to bring in a better player there for sure. Malakia has come in on that left back position. He is a very young left back that easily could go up in his stats very, very nicely. Eric Dyer is playing center back for this team. I don't know why. Luis Felipe is here, who is obviously great. Then we have Lazari at right back. And then Mamardashvili is in this squad as well. And a little bit of a surprise on top of it. Strömberg, who probably is Ibra's region, is in the team as well. So we got really lucky here by joining uh, the Lazio squad. And this is the rest of the team. A lot of these guys are going to be sold right now to make some extra cash. And uh, after that... We're going to use the budget to our advantage and make sure that Jose gets the players th that he wants. We currently have... Whoa. Whoa. Okay. 66 million. Oh, by the way, I'm not even in a new season. What am I saying here? We are not even in, in the new season, guys, which means I get to spend that 66 million right now. Let's do it. New right back, new sentiment. Let's go. The transfers I have gone for. Serginho Dest for around 40 million. Zubimendi in a swap deal, including a player that was worth 19.5. And on top of it, a bunch of money. Our budget is now depleted at the end of this season. But we are bringing in two players from La Liga who are going to help us a lot. 3 million left. Let's get into the new season and see the new budget. And you know what, guys? My goal at Lazio is not going to be to go ahead and get top four. I am going to give myself a new goal, and that is to win the Serie A. Yes, so that means we might be here with Lazio for more than just one season. Here we go. Serie A, I want that trophy. Otherwise, Jose ain't going nowhere until the project is done. So the new season consists of only 39 million. That's not great. A couple of players are uh, leaving, I guess. Sakagni is going. Uh, certain contracts have been re renewed with Fraser, Fraser Foster. Uh, Zubi Mendy is coming in. Dest is coming in. So let's check out their ratings. Um, it's not the biggest budget that we have. Immobile has gone down in his rating, which is not great to see. Korea. Where the hell is Korea? Doku has come in. What the? What is happening? Where's Milinkovic Savic? Oh, no. Don't you tell me they had contracts signed for them. Ah, oh, bro. That just messes up everything. I okay now the goalposts have been moved which means 
No, no title in Italy, guys. We are actually going for top four. If we can achieve top four with this team right here, with what we have right now, that's going to be a huge achievement. So for that reason, I guess we'll dial down the expectations. No title winning required with Lazio. I did not expect this to happen. I got to be honest with you. Um... This is an L. This is a massive L. We have a 66 rated center back in the team. Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, uh, all of our money is going to go away for a center back. And then after that, we have nothing to sell, nothing to do. We just have this team. So top four achievement with this squad would be quite nice. <coughs> Let me go ahead and apply the Jose uh, um, depth and everything and the play style. Uh, so hopefully... This can somehow help us out and uh, we can get things done. So forward runs with is going to be quite high, actually. Uh, players in the box. There we go. Wow, this is going to be a much tougher season than I expected. And we got no money for those sales, which is a disgrace. So, yeah. Good luck to us. A decision has been made. Basic plus uh, around our entire budget has been spent on Maxence Kakere. We are going to change our cdm or our formation i guess we're gonna go with two cdms and one center midfielder in zubimendi that is what i kind of want to go for here so let's go ahead and switch it up to a four four three three with i guess this setup exactly that's the one that i'm looking for so here we go zubimendi moves up kakere is right there he's actually zubimendi is actually better at cdm quite interesting to see but nonetheless i have three midfielders who are very good at defending by the looks of things and uh, hopefully that will lead to a better defense. Did I just go ahead and spend my entire budget on a new center midfielder while I have a 66 rated center back in my team? Oh my God, bro. Sometimes my brain... Oh. Okay, I just put myself in a horrible spot. Well, good luck to me. A deal had to be made for the center back position. I have sold Hizaj and Teo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for my stupidity, I had to do it. Orban is joining into the squad. The center back that used to play for Leipzig coming in from the Juventus squad into our team. I tried to go for Rudiger. I wanted to try to go for Inacio, but then I realized... I need to go for high-rated centre-backs that are old. And Orban is coming in at an 82 rating. He's 32 years old. And that is going to be an instant improvement for our team. Right now, again, I'm somewhat confident going into the season. Recognizing that we only have one player below 80. Or two players below 80. Uh, but still, there's no chance we are winning the league. I mean, there's absolutely no chance. Um, depending on how I feel towards the end of the season, I might continue with Lazio. But man, top four would be a huge achievement with this. I'd be very happy. December is coming to an end and we look unbeaten so far, which again is a bit surprising considering that we haven't really had the strongest lineup going into the year. Oh, we are fifth. Okay. Okay. I mean, whew, there's a big gap between the top four. I mean, top four was the bare minimum that I wanted to achieve. Six points to Napoli. Okay. I mean, that is definitely not great. Um, ooh, we are looking at Immobile going down in his rating even more. Oh, the team has barely improved, guys. Only Ibra's regen on the bench has <laughs> shown somewhat of, a, of, a, of growth. But man, oh man, it's not looking good right now. And if we can't pull this off... I don't know what we're supposed to do here uh, with Lazio. I'm, I am going to extend contracts because just in case we're going to be here for longer. If I if I can't get top four this season, I am going for the title next season. All right. So um, for that reason, we need to keep all these players around. Who has been the best performer? Immobile, of course, 13 and four. He should be going up with that form. He should be going up, not down. Even if he's 33 years old, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Doku having a good season, though. Glad he came in somehow. Uh, without him, this would have been a terrible season for sure. Zubimendi having a good year as well. Johnny off the bench, quite decent. But top four is far away six points. We got to pull that off somehow. Look at that. A bunch of wins. Ah, of course. Right when I say it. Right when I have to say it. When I have to open my mouth. We lose the games. But can we finish off strong? Top four could be on the horizon, guys. Ah, of course, we lose the last one. Oh, nah. Nah, Jose can't expect, accept this, guys. We're going to spend another season at Lazio. Seventh position is just not good enough. No European football, no nothing. That is a disgrace for a manager. 48 rating. 
This is not done yet. This is not done yet at all. Doku 85. Immobile gone up back again to the 84. We need to probably sell him next season to bring in someone else. Uh, Felipe Anderson is looking decent there. Has grown a little bit. Zubimende, Kakare and Sangare all close to each other in terms of rating. And the defense has even gone up here. A couple of players, of course, Dest, massive jump there to the 84 rating. Mamar Dashvili now becoming a much more viable player. I mean, this, yeah, I will not accept this. No top four, no nothing. Next season has to be so much better. I do not deserve a better job than Lazio, Lazio right now with Jose. So, yeah, let's hope the budget is big because if it isn't, it's going to be very hard for us to improve because we barely have any players to sell. 21 and 5 for Immobile, 7.2 average rating. Doku with the 12 and 8, 7.0. Very well done. Johnny as a substitute, doing really well. Orban has gotten five goals as a center back. And then in terms of assists, we have Zubimendi and Doku with eight. So well done to those guys. But seventh in the league is not acceptable. Uh, I, I just, uh, that, that's not okay. Where's Roma? Roma is first. That is not okay. The city rivals are winning the league title while we sit here outside of the top four. No, no. We go again. We go into the next season. I stay at Lazio. 64.8 million in the transfer budget for the new year. 55 manager rating. We survived. But guys, I will not accept that defeat. Uh, transfers coming in right now. Guys, here it is. Jose is signing a player from his former squad, Chelsea. Hudson Odoi is the right wing that's going to come in for Felipe Anderson. Plus 50 million. I know, I know, I know. That's a lot of money, but... I want someone that can um, hopefully do well throughout this year and grow by at least a plus three. And Doku goes on the right, Hudson Odoi goes on to the left. That puts a very good team together. And I have put Immobile onto the onto the transfer list. His value has gone up to 54 million. I would be stupid to not sell a 34 year old 54 million. So I am waiting for an offer to come in. And if necessary, I'll play Ibra's region. I don't care, man. I'll play him. If it's necessary, I can do it right now. But yeah, the bench is looking terrible. We just got to focus on the starting lineup. Uh, uh, anything else is impossible right now with the budget that we have at play. 67.9 million for Immobile. These guys are blind. <laughs> they are not looking at his age at all. I, I'm fine with that. That is going to be... Yeah. Lots of good money coming in right now, guys. Immobile is going. And you know what? I might even go for Mukoko, but he's probably way too low rated. Nah, that's not going to happen. I need to find someone that can improve us immediately. I need a top, top striker. Guys, I've just spent 75 million. Yes, I have since spent 75 million on a player worth 55.5. Charles de Ketelar or Ketelar, whatever his name is. He is coming in now into the team. One of the biggest talents when it comes to... Uh, Belgium, he is taking over at striker and he looks incredible. I gotta admit, man, this guy has some unreal stats. Six foot four with those stats. Four star, four star, left footed. That front three is looking dangerous. The midfield is looking good. The defense is looking good. I'm going for top four, but if we can somehow pull it off, a title run would be incredible with this team. January 2025. Let's take a look at the rest of the season before we move on. Looks kind of decent. Hey, you know what? We're in a conference league, by the way. But this is not looking bad. We, we might be in a top four. That's... That's the first... Jose, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? Why are we looking at a first positioned Lazio team as the previous champions are in the 13th position? What is going on? Who is doing so well? Ooh, Hudson Adoy, 85. De Ketelar up like plus two. Doku gone up to an 87. Look at that midfield. Zubimendi, Sangare, and Kakere looking very good right there. Luis Felipe, 85. Orban growing to an 84 at the age of 32. Dest at an 87, Malakia at an 83, Mamardashvili at an 82. Well, don't get me wrong, the bench is horrifying, but the starting lineup is filled with players that can actually get it done. So my hope of winning the Serie A is actually maybe happening in this season. 14 and 2 for Doku, 13 and 4 for Ketelar, and 9 and 3 for Hudson and Doi. That front three is looking spicy. Dest and Sangare and Ketelar have four assists so far. And Malakia coming in with the three as well. Plus two growth for the 25-year-old left back who is doing well for us. 
Uh, we have extended his contract to make sure that he doesn't actually leave the team on a release clause. But, guys, first, let's keep it up. Let's see if they can go ahead and maybe possibly win the conference league as well. Okay, so in the league, things have not necessarily gone too well, but the top four hopefully is still in, which was the goal. But we have the conference league final coming up, so that's going to be quite interesting. Um, I mean, it's not looking... To, ah, nah, there's no way we won the league with that many losses. Nah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We failed in the second half of the season, guys, but... Winning the Conference League here could be a decent achievement for our team as long as we get top four alongside with it as well. So let's go ahead and simulate this match and see. Doku at an 88, Ketelar 86, Hudson Odoi 86. I mean, this team, we have improved it a lot since we have come in. And there it is. Zubimendi, Strömberg and Ketelar have done it. That is us done with Lazio. Jose is going to move on after that one. And now the question is, how have we done in the league? Are we in the top four? Yes, we are third. Only three points behind Inter. Now that is painful. Oh, that sucks. AC Milan with a goal difference of 41. Haven't managed to go up there. That is a bit ridiculous. That, that goal difference is insane. But hey, top three. We have done it. Champions League is guaranteed for us for the next season. Lazio, congratulations. Jose has helped you throughout the two seasons. First season wasn't that great, I'll have to admit. But the second season, we have delivered a trophy to this team. And that is good enough for me. So, Jose, it's time to move on. Let's see how he did in Coppa Italia, by the way. We have lost, I assume, ooh, very early on. Oh, Hellas Verona, round of 16. That's not good. Okay. New jobs. Where are we going? Do we go to Spain, maybe? Is there a chance? Olympique Lyon, AS Monaco. And you know what? I, ooh, PSG. PSG. I mean, that would make things too easy. Nah, that's too far. That's too far. But you know what? Dethroning PSG? Nah, that's going to be impossible. It's going to be impossible. There's no way we dethrone PSG. Nah, it's not going to happen. Ah, France going ahead and winning the league title with this team. I don't see many great players in there, man. I have to admit. So I might have to pass on France. We'll have to wait for a different offer to come through. Oh, there it is. Spain is coming in strong. We have so many options here. Inter, Fiorentina and Atalanta want us, but Atletico Madrid is coming in now and they are looking insanely strong. I am seeing Matip Jimenez van Dijk. I'm seeing Llorente. I am seeing Merino, Greenwood, Felix. Whew. Let's go ahead and win, win, uh, win the Spanish league title with Atletico Madrid. That is the goal. If we can't get it done, if we can't beat Real Madrid and Barcelona, that's it, guys. We do another season. And the second season, I would need to win at least two trophies at Atletico Madrid. So those are the objectives that I'm setting myself. But as we join into Atleti, Obviously, we'll have a decent amount to spend even in that first season. And let's make sure no one is leaving us as soon as we join, like it did happen with Lazio. Jose in that Atleti kit is going to be a weird one for me. But let's take a look at the squad immediately. We are looking at Joao Felix at a 91. I mean, come on. We, we got it. We got to put him in there immediately. Greenwood, 87. My God, that guy looks incredible. He actually gets a plus two in cam, which is interesting to see. Uh, uh, or is that a is that a center forward? That is Cam, isn't it? Ooh, Gabriel Jesus, Jonathan David, no freaking way, Jude Bellingham, bro. Oh, dude, we have to win the league. We have to win the league. I mean, are you kidding? We have Jude Bellingham. We have Pino on the bench as well. This team is crazy good. This team is insane. Jonathan David, Pino, and Bellingham on the bench. I would have put them all into the starting lineup in that last team. There are a few positions that we might need to improve. Of course, that centre-back spot needs improving. But I'm going to keep the formation as it is. It looks incredible. I might go for a new left mid and a new right mid, but that's pretty much us done. Are you kidding? What a freaking team. Well, one signing has been made. Pino is going the other way around. And on top of it, 118 million for the main man of Real Madrid right now. Vinicius Jr. in the next season is going to be playing for us as an 88 rated left wing. But look at what I have done to the starting lineup right now, guys. Let me show you here. We are looking 
at two centre forwards in Joao Felix and Jesus, supporting Jonathan David Greenwood on the right midfield position. Vinicius Jr. coming in onto that left wing position. Merino and Llorente covering defence and attack at the same time with incredible work rates, of course. Van Dijk, Jimenez, and then Matip is in that centre-back spot, which I'm thinking about possibly letting go Bellingham so I can afford a better centre-back, but uh, we'll see how that goes for now. This is how we go into the new season, our first full season with the squad. And of course, we'll get a new budget. So let's see how that goes. 90 million for Jude Bellingham in the new season. He is going across to AC Milan. He's worth 67.5, but that leaves us with a decent amount of money, guys. It leaves us with hopefully over 150, 160, 170 million, depending on how much the cut is going to be at the end. But guys, um, I gotta say, um, I think we need to win the Champions League with this squad. So the Jose Mourinho road to glory or the Jose Mourinho rebuild might conclude itself at Atleti because we have found ourselves joining a team that has such potential and such insane players. If we can't do it here, we can't do it anywhere else. I don't want a Manchester City or a PSG and take them there. I'd rather take an Atletico Madrid type team to win it in the end because Obviously, it's not necessarily a team that wins too many Champions Leagues. So, I'd rather do that. So, for now, I am staying at Atleti to win La Liga, to win Copa del Rey, to win the Champions League. All of that is what we need to achieve. So, here it goes. First big transfer coming in soon after the departure of Bellingham. I am going in for Cristian Romero because during his time at Atalanta and in the Serie A, he was incredible. And now he's an 87 rated center back that plays for Manchester United. I am going in and buying a player off of a former squad of Jose. So 90 million. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forget about that one real quick. He ain't going nowhere. I guess 105 million. We'll have to cut it here. Go on then. Go on and say no. 116. We have the cash. I don't mind. Cristian Romero coming in, still leaving us with over 60 million to spend. But do I want to spend? No, I don't want to spend. I have such an insane team with so many incredibly talented players right now. This Atletico Madrid team, I couldn't have built it better. But the thing is, obviously, there are so many mainstream players in there. But at the end of the day, man, this is a rebuild for Jose, and he needs the best players in the world to go ahead and get it done for him. So, hey, it is what it is. Cristian Romero, top of his game, 87, full potential already. We can maybe take him to an 88, and now he is added to our squad. 80 million, his value has gone up, which is beautiful to see. So let's jump right in there, take him out of there, put this big man in there, and here we go. Romero, Jimenez, Van Dijk. Let's put this man into the middle. That's just, it just doesn't feel right when he isn't down the center there. But yeah, super attacking, but these guys might be able to hold it down. These kids, <laughs> oh God, they are going to tear up La Liga and hopefully the Champions League as well. January 2026, first season at Leti, and we are dominating. Oh my God, 47 points. Oh boy, this is, yeah, this might be the one and only season at, Atle at Atleti if things go like this. Only one loss for this team. Normally, I end up struggling against Atletico Madrid in the rebuilds. They tend to kick me out of the Champions League and everything. But oh my. Wow. Greenwood, 90. Llorente, 91. Whoa. What happened to my center back? Uh, man, what the hell is going on with these people buying off my center backs? Where did he go? Who the hell bought my center back? Who went for him? Him and his 110 million to Man City. Oh, well, all right. I'll go ahead and buy myself a new Jimenez. Don't care. I'll buy someone in a second, guys. I think he just departed. So yeah, it's it's all good. We'll be able to go ahead and replace him immediately. But even with that, look at how our team is doing with a 77 rated center back in there. Just imagine if we can bring in another one right now. But the growth on certain players is incredible. Gabriel Jesus needs to be changed to a center forward. I completely forgot about that. So let me do that right now. And uh, I mean, I don't know if this is going to help, but hey, <laughs> you try your best, right? So center forward, he should be going up in his rating. I think he will. And when he does, that's going to boost up our team even more. But Jonathan David is leading the line as an 89 rated player with the five star weak foot. He probably plays insanely well. 
with the likes of Joao Felix and Jesus talking about playing well. Let's see the stats. Who is dominating? Jonathan David, 21 and 2 in 24 games. What a beast. Joao Felix, 8 and 6. Well done. Uh, Vinicius with the 7 and 1. Camelo coming in as a substitute, doing well for himself. Greenwood only 3 and 1. I would like to see a little bit better. Llorente is up by 3. I don't know how the hell he pulls it off. He's 30 years old. This guy is a cheat code. Since Jose is Portuguese, how about we go for a Portuguese man to come in and become the captain of the team? But then again, imagine, imagine Van Dijk and this man playing in one team. How incredible would that be? 130 million for Ruben Diaz. They accept it straight away because they know he's not going to go any higher. Hey, Pep, you might have bought uh, Jimenez, but... I just bought an even better center back, in my opinion. Here he comes, 91 rated Ruben Diaz. What the hell am I seeing? We're playing Europa League? So you're telling me the team that dominated the league wasn't even qualified for Champions... What? Huh? They got second last season. Hold on a second. We are in the Europa League final, which is sick. So I'm happy with that. Did we get kicked out of champions league who kicked us out no we were f we were in the europa league from the get-go dude when i joined in the top right it said atleti was second i swear i swear it said they were second so i came into a team that didn't even have champions league football ah these are these guys are jokers man these guys are absolute jokers wow oh well Okay, whose contract is expiring real quick? Uh, I might have to keep some of these guys around for the next season. So let's make sure we do so. Uh, Saponic, can I keep you? Nope, that one's gone. This one we can keep. Just so we have a little bit of squad depth, I want to make sure that we keep these players around. But generally speaking, this is a huge disappointment to see that uh, we are only Europa League finalists. But have we won the league? Have we won the league? Has Jose been able to pull it off? La Liga Santander, 91 points. La Liga has been won. What about what happened to Copa del Rey, actually? Where where did we drop out there? Copa de España here. We uh we didn't even make it far. Wait, what? Where the hell are we? Where the hell am I blind? We lost against Leganes. Leganes? I have a team with an average rating of nearly 90. What? Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Jose just has to stick around for another season. We go into 2027. Well, here it goes. Europa League final. Win it. Or I'm going to smash something up. Yes. Maybe, you know, the midfielder scores while we have some of the most prolific attacking players in world football right now. This is what we love to see. Anyways, guys, this season has not gone the way I wanted it to in Europe. We have not been able to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So Jose has to go in once again. And guys, uh, yeah, all I want is that Champions League trophy for him to lift it. So we got to go, go again. And I'm going to go straight to the season finale for the next year because I don't care about La Liga right now. All I want is that Champions League trophy because that is the biggest thing you can achieve as a coach. Oh, lads, it's happening. It's happening. April 2027. We are now here in the season, skipping past everyone. Liverpool, can we beat them once again? Can we beat them once again? Yes, we can. Champions League final against Barcelona. A former team of Jose Mourinho. Yes, a lot of people don't actually know this. Of course, Jose is known for being an insane, insane coach for Real Madrid and winning titles and all that good stuff and doing well at Chelsea. But um, guys, we are now going to be playing against Barcelona where he was actually Van Gaal, his assistant. He was the uh, guy that would do the translations. Also, by the way, Biscuit, please zoom in on this part because uh, we can't show the Champions League stuff because, again, it gives me copyright issues. Just a little information for my editor, guys. You don't have to listen to this part. Now, while we have the Champions League final, La Liga, we actually only came second to Barcelona. Well, they have taken away our title in the league. Looks like it might be time to take away everything from them by winning the Champions League. I am actually excited to see this Barcelona squad. Who is playing for this team, man? 
I mean, hold on. Before we move to Barcelona, look at this team. Jonathan David, 91. Joao Felix, 93. Jesus, up to a 92. Greenwood, 93. Llorente, 92. Merino, 88. Vinicius Jr., 92. Ruben Diaz, up to a 92. Van Dijk has gone down a little bit. Romero up to an 89. And Oblak is continuing his growth at the age of 34. If this team can't get it done, bro, I don't know which team can. I just want to see what squad Barcelona rolls up with. I am assuming a very high rated uh, Ansu Fati, but what about the rest? Who else is in that team? Because we have taken away Gavi, as you guys might remember. So here it is. It consists of Depay, Fati, Usman Dembele, who's going to be very high rated. KDB, De Jong, Coutinho plays CDM. No, no, I'm sorry. We can't be having that. Oh, no, he's actually really in there. Mensch, uh, Hernandez, Maguire, Mbabu, Testegen. Interesting squad. Very, very interesting squad going into the final part of, hopefully, this uh, Jose Mourinho rebuild. Jonathan David has 50. 53 goal contributions in 59 games. If I don't score a goal with this man in the Champions League final, I don't deserve him. Greenwood 22 and 9, Vinicius 22 and 10, Gabriel Jesus 19 and 11, and Joao has somewhat done well for the second half of the season, but still a terrible rating for such a high rated player. 7 and 4 just ain't good enough, but hey, who cares? We're in the Champions League final. Let's get it on. I'll have to admit, this is definitely the best offensive team I've ever taken into a Champions League final. I think I can I, I can easily say that. I'm pretty confident in saying that as well. But yeah, defensively, it's also amazing. But of course, an 86-rated centre-back in Van Dijk is not necessarily ideal. But even an 86-rated Van Dijk is probably going to do the job right here. Barcelona coming in with some very solid players as we have seen, but they are playing certain players out of position. My God, Vinicius was quick there. Hold on. We got a good turn going. Gabriel, go on. Ah, that pass wasn't good enough, but a good start. Joao, Joao, I see the space. Llorente, Greenwood, far post. Joao tries it on his left foot in the air. Not too bad, buddy. Good try. Oh, hold on. Mistakes were made. Bang. Ah, Testegen. Decent save. Two chances back to back. I am looking for the boys at the far post, I guess. That is Romero. Romero! <laughs> Get in. What a header. What a header in the 11th minute from Cristian Romero. The new Spurs center back steps up for our team. Jose will be very happy with that one. Incredible header from one of his defenders. He pays a lot of uh, attention to his defenders, of course, and the way they play. He doesn't just beat Testigan. He also beats the man at the far post. Harry Maguire, slab head is beaten in the air. Well, if that isn't something beautiful to see. You know what I like about this formation? A lot of players move forward at the same time. Greenwood. Greenwood, obviously, with incredible, incredible stats on him now. Look at that. Ooh, that needs to be better. That was Merino. Mourinho ain't happy with that one. Nice coat, though. Just one little interesting detail. I've just thought about this. I wanted to look it up. So Mourinho, as a genuine first team coach, started off at Benfica. Then he moved over to Leiria. Then he moved over to Porto. And that team already he won the Champions League with. Then he moved over to Chelsea, and we all know what happened there. So after only three teams in his career, he has been able to achieve absolute greatness, right? So congratulations for that, first of all. But he has done it with three teams. We have done it with Morodense. Then we have moved over to... Uh, oh, God, I can't even think of what we moved off to now. Wow, I am getting old, bro. I am I am soon to be 30 years old, and you can tell. I forgot. Bro, where the hell were we? We were at Morenenza, then we were at, were we at Lazio straight after Morenenza. No, Rangers. There we go. So we were at Morenenza, Rangers, and then Lazio, and now Atleti. So it took me one more team. If I can win it after all, it will have taken me one more team. Uh, so Mourinho in real life did it earlier than I did. Oh, Llorente against the young. <laughs> Not only against the young, 
He also beats the defenders and the goalkeeper in incredible fashion. This man is unstoppable. I love to see it. Oh, man, Llorente. What a finish. Look at that. Decent passing play in between players. And then he just goes, you know what? I'll take that. And honestly, it's on Harry Maguire. Look at how he's moving as we take the shot. He slides off to the side and lets it get past him. Harry Maguire is the Jose, Jose Mourinho fan. He actually goes ahead and lets him win. Is that what's happening right here? Down the right we go now with Greenwood. Greenwood has many, many options in the middle. Barcelona has no answer to everything that we are offering them. Good passing. One more. Vinicius. Merino. Llorente. There goes the striker. Oh, great ball in behind. Depay. Memphis. Oh, okay. Memphis, decent play. Usman Dembele, a very, very dangerous player, but Van Dijk is in the right spot. Well done, Van Dijk. Our defense is still paying attention. That's lovely to see. Down the right, we have a runner. Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood. He's looking for David. I can't find him. I said I need to score a goal with Jonathan David. I probably should have taken the shot with Mason Greenwood there. I had enough space. Bring it back into the center. Lovely. Llorente. Jonathan David. Jonathan David! No, 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 no. That ain't good enough. Ooh, ooh, mistakes were made. Oh, Jonathan, 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 I need you inside. Joao, Jonathan, I said I'm going to score with him, so I will score with him, even if I have to force it. Atletico Madrid is going to be winning the Champions League title, my friends. It's in front of you. I mean, are you surprised? We have one of the most insane attacks I've ever used in any rebuild. This team would cost us so much money. It would probably cost me billions. I'm not even kidding. Um, so, yeah, the fact that we are 3 0 up against Barcelona, who have a couple of decent players, but not world beaters like we do, isn't really a surprising thing. I feel bad for the good players in this Barca squad, like the De Jongs and the Ansu Fatis. They must think to themselves, man, why am I stuck over here while these guys are playing all together and having fun? Oh, you know what? Okay. Okay, I see you, Dembele. I see you, Depay, with that assist. All right, man. I'll give, it, I'll give that to you guys. Decent play, I'll have to admit. Uh, my defense was a little bit... A little bit, uh, yeah, I guess, sleeping. But hey... It is what it is. We move. We move. Oh, what a pass. That is ridiculous. Oh, my God. No, you got to score that. Yes, Merino. Great steal. Go on, Jonathan. I will find you. I will find you, Jonathan. Harry Maguire. Come on. Get get off the pitch, man. You have no chance catching up to this kid. Far post. Che golasso. No, 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 no. Ah, yes. Greenwood. Come on. Ah, oh, you deserve a goal, don't you? Right next to Harry Maguire. Former teammate. Don't care. You score one, I score four. That's what I do. Mason Greenwood is incredible. I have such high hopes in this guy in terms of, like, football moving forward and what he can achieve. He looks incredible, man. Uh, I really hope that uh, Ralf Ragnick can go ahead and teach him a few things help him with the high press and up his physicality and all that stuff so he can actually deal with that type of stuff of like running the full 90 minutes because this guy his technical ability his finishing ability is just ridiculous mason greenwood is such a talent and i'm saying this as a liverpool fan Ooh, this is not over this is not over oh my god come on give me that i want one more attack one more juan more please juan more please no, couldn't get that attack going. It is what it is, guys. It is, after all, a win in the Champions League final against Barcelona, who stand no chance. You might have KDB, you might have De Jong, you might have Ansu Fati, but you don't have Joao, you don't have Jesus, you don't have David Ruben Diaz, the Portuguese man lifting a trophy for a Portuguese manager. That is all we wanted to see, guys. We have achieved absolute greatness with Jose Mourinho and the rebuild of his career. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button because I am looking forward to go ahead and record more manager rebuilds if you want us to do that. Of course, moving forward, I might implement certain rules 
Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. But for this one, I just wanted to kick it off with Jose because I feel like he deserves it. He is a footballing great. And I feel like he has been a bit hard done by in the last few times in his jobs. Hopefully he can find his way back to greatness again and become another manager alongside the incredible ones we already have competing in the top, top divisions. Portuguese man lifting the trophy for the Portuguese goat of managers. We have done it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had a great day. Take care and peace.